As awesome as this cheap sound system has been, it severely lacks one thing. And then I heard boom from the amplifiers. The bump, the bass, that feeling deep into the song. We need to fix that. And here we are at Walmart. Mind you, this is not a sponsored video. And since the last video on the $20 speakers was so popular, the number one comment was, why not do a sub? Here we are doing just that. And for those of you that are doing a beginner amplifier or sub system, we're gonna take something very simple. No, not the screaming kid in the background, but this. A sub, amplifier, and box all built into one. Let's see just how effective this really is. What comes in an all-in-one subwoofer box? Mounting brackets. Okay. That's actually pretty heavy. There we go. A nice carpeted box of speaker. What's slightly different about this versus the speakers is they were fairly plug and play. This is gonna require some extra wiring which is why we have this. So this thing's got a little bit of everything. Wires for the power and ground, which are important, and of course a fuse, because if you mess up and short it out, you don't want your car catching on fire. Speaker wires for both sides, left and right, and extra length of wire to run it to the amp. So those cheap speakers from the last video are kind of meant to play everything mediocre, but this one is more of a purpose-driven speaker. Yes, it's bigger, so you would think that bigger means louder, but it's really meant to capture the bass or the deeper notes in the music. This larger speaker requires so much power that the wires alone from the head unit aren't capable of powering it. So you have to run power directly to this unit, which then has a built-in amplifier to power that speaker. Because this is such a purpose-built system, it's not meant to play every single note that comes through the music. So you have settings on the side that let you adjust how much of the music is actually played through this speaker. Oh, you know what this is for, right? So you keep your amp strapped. You gotta, keep, you gotta keep your shit strapped in case anybody pulls up on you. And while I wanna make this video as cheap as possible, there's one thing you will see me not mess around with. At least this section of the wire. This is the positive, this is coming off the battery or the alternator charge line. There's a fuse right here. If you do not have the fuse close to the power source, you will do very bad things to your car when you eventually ground it out or do something bad. This step is a little interesting and it'll be different for everybody's car, but we're gonna have to find a way to get this wire through the firewall or bulkhead or however you wanna call it and get it into the passenger compartment safely. First step, take off your positive lead. You could, in fact, run this here, but now you have to worry about this wire splitting and having problems and potentially getting shorted out. Start from the fuse box area we're gonna snake it along where the wire loom goes along the car and the fender here, and then have it run down by the base of the kickboard over here. Finally, run it along the side of the door frame, up the back, and then there we go, we've poked it right all the way to where we want the subwoofer to be. So we've got the wire going through the rubber waterproof sealant. We're gonna wrap it up along the wiring harness, zip tie it to it so it does not move, and then snake it out under through here and then connect it to the fuse box. This is really why you want that fuse on this line. This is in an area where it's gonna get a lot of traffic and say this wire shorts up and it shorts to the body of the car there goes your battery, or here comes a big, thick fire wire. Friendly little channel there. I'm just gonna run it all the way up through this. And there we go. We are about 90% of the way to the subwoofer. Fortunately, grounding is one of the easiest steps. We'll just find something that shorts out to the frame and properly attach it to the ground wire. You have to keep in mind though that power runs through the full circuit. So you can see that this gauge of wire is the same thickness as the power line and that is for good reason. Power goes in a full circle. This is about our closest spot for a nice and solid ground. As you can see, we're starting to collect the wires into a spot that can become sort of a makeshift loom. So now that we've got power and ground ready to go, we need the ignition on, 
and the two speakers. This is something weird about the Honda Insight as well as some other economy vehicles, is that beneath this, there is a plate for where a speaker should go. We're looking at all the different options on where to mount this, and this seems to be the best space. We can't fit it behind the seats, and I don't think facing it away or facing it at any other angle is really a good option. Those of you that might know more, please in the comments, let me know where you think this sub should be placed. The remote turn on. This is basically wired to ignition on, and I figured why not use the one from the head unit. We'll take it off from the passenger side, run it through the head unit, through here, because there's no clutch pedals or anything to really get in the way, and then run it, of course, along the whole side of the car and back to the amp and sub. A potential pitfall you might run into, depending on your head unit of the car, is running your subs and your amps from the rear speaker wires. If you want to splice the rear speaker wires, you can. That's considered a high level situation. Instead, thankfully, this has RCA outputs on the back of this newer head unit. It's a $20 one, so all the more expensive units definitely have it, and this is more of a low power level output that we can run all the way through the rest of the car. There we go. Now the other aspect of this is that we have to undo this wiring. I have all of these individually wrapped, but the important one here is this dark blue. Dark blue on here is the remote turn on. We're gonna splice in the sub to this line this third one in there, mix them all up, make a nice little menage a trois with the wiring set up. Now we have the speaker wire and the ignition on wires that we're going to run through the rest of the car. Put this back. And that looks out of the way of the seatbelt and it looks pretty good for where we want it to come in at. We're going to leave this like this for the moment because we don't know exactly how we want to cut the carpet. We just know we do, just not yet. This isn't quite as nice as the head unit's wiring harness, but it'll still do. There's a little bit of confusion with how this is set up though. You got two ground wires, which makes sense, two remote turn-ons, and then two power leads. But on the diagram, it'll actually confuse you a little bit by showing you that the battery has a plus and minus, the remote turn-on has a plus and minus, and then ground has a plus and minus. That's where you can tell there's something wrong. So what we're gonna do is take the guesswork out of it, and we're gonna just crimp these together and do a quick power on test. This is the result of a poor wiring diagram. I'm just setting everything all together real quickly just to see with a quick flip of the switch, does this thing burn out or do I burn out a fuse? That's a good sign. Nothing's powered on, which is also a good sign. So we blipped the power on real quick because if anything, we're just going to blow a fuse and see what's going on before we damage anything else. Thankfully, I trusted my gut on this wiring setup and this is correct. We're going to terminate these properly and finish this all up. So it sounds fairly decent plug and play, but there's a little bit of tuning you're capable of doing with this speaker. This thing's called crossover and that's at what the highest note this speaker will attempt to play. Look at it at max. Sounds horrible, but we tune it back a little bit and it's gonna play the notes it's best at playing. And then I heard boom from the amplifiers. So it's very clear on those lower notes without much calibration at all, this thing kicks ass. It's certainly for a little virgin ears like me type of guy, it works. I, I, I think it passes the test. That was certainly worth $80 and hating my life running wires. I think we should test it a little bit more. Jarrett, between shots, has been bitching about how well... I don't... I, don't, I think it's kind of weak. Okay, he thinks not. it's weak. So we're going to play one of his songs off of his playlist to see what he thinks it sounds like. Give me the damn camera. 